Welcome to the training. We're going to talk about how to get access to Dispute Panda. You're either going to get an invite from a partner or an outsourcer. Then you have to verify your email. And then you have two types of accounts. One is the outsourcing. One is the CRO level. Outsourcing accounts cannot send off a tax where CRO level accounts can send off a tax. If you stumbled upon this training, you have yet to be invited to the platform. You can also go to DisputePanda.com and request an invite. Fill out this information and our team will get back to you as soon as possible. Once you are invited to the platform, the first thing you want to do is check your email. And you're going to see an email you're invited to Dispute Panda with the following details, with the following details in it. If you do not see this email in your inbox, it might be in your spam or promotions. So one thing that we need to do is whitelist the Dispute Panda email address so you are not missing out on future updates, future um, improvements. So you want to hit this settings wheel. If you're in Gmail, you hit settings, see all settings, filtered and blocked addresses. Then you want to create a new filter. As you see, we already created one here, but you'll create a new filter. The from will be info at disputepanda.com. You'll hit create filter and you'll say never send it to spam. Always mark is important and star it and you'll create filter. This means any email coming from info at disputepanda.com in the future will go to your inbox and not your spam. Once you have done that process, let's go back to our email here. You're going to receive this email. It'll look like this. It'll be like the name of the person is inviting you to join Dispute Panda. You can click accept invitation. Okay. Once you click the invite, you'll come to a screen like this. We've already pre-filled the areas, but the company name is the name in which you were invited under. Your first name, your last name, the email address you want to use to log in, and the password you want to use to log in. Then you hit register. You may see a screen like this. This basically means that your CRO hasn't been approved by our admins on the back end yet. Uh, approvals happen typically twice a day. So no worries. It's uh, pretty quick to get onto the platform once you are here. However, once approved, you'll be able to log in with your email and password that you set up. If you forgot your password, just hit the forgot password button here and you can send yourself an email to reset your password. And now you're logged in. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add clients into this Panda. When you log into the system, you want to go to your dashboard. On your dashboard, you're going to see this create a new client. And then you want to go ahead and fill all this out specifically for your client, exactly how it needs to be for your client. So your finished product should look something like this. You need to fill out all the areas with a star. You want this to be exactly how your client um, needs it to be. And then you'll hit save. So now you're going to be on the documents tab for that particular client, which will give you a view like this. Um, let's do a quick overview of uh, this tab. You have identification here, which is proof of identification, proof of address. You have your credit report. You can upload the file or you can upload text. And you have your credit monitoring details so you can save for later. So um, keep in mind that your proof of identification and your proof of address, they have to be less than one megabit. So I've taken the liberty to add the proof of identification and proof of address here. Once you add those two documents in, it's going to blur it out and it'll be an X there. So X means you can remove it. And if you wanted to put it back, you can just drag and drop or you can upload if you want to. Now onto our credit reports. The credit reports used um, smart credit in all variants. So you can use any smart credit, any smart credit white label. So smart credit white labels are, for example, my free score now is a smart credit white label and show is the ID defender is a smart credit white label. Um, if you have your own smart credit white label, this will work with you as well. You can use my score IQ and identity IQ as well. And in the future, we'll be releasing or updating to allow different credit report variants as well. How do you import a credit report? Pretty simple. 
Um, you can upload it. So if you do have the actual file, you can drag it and drop it over. And you'll see the credit report will be here. And then we also will say you should put your credit monitoring details in there. So you can say smart credit. And then you hit this update button and it saves it. Credentials updated. Now you will notice something because we have identification documents, the proof of address and the credit report installed. The other tabs have opened up. So if you have a CRO level account, you're going to see the disputing attacks and history tab. If you only have an outsourcing level account, you're going to see profile documents and history. Now, um, say you need it to update the credit report for the next month. Um, for the next month, you just hit this X here and it opens up again. But say this time you want to actually include a uh, HTML. You will go to your HTML and you can use a page source. And then you can grab that HTML and go back into the Speed Panda. And you hit this upload button and give it five seconds or so and it should process. So there you have it with adding in. Um, and this client is ready for processing. And if you go to your dashboard here, you want to see it says missing document. And when you hit refresh, it's going to go to ready to attack. Um, so let's also continue on and do analysis of this profile tab. Once you add in the credit reports, you're going to see the personal information here. You can see the latest activity as far as importing the report. And you can see some scores here. Keep in mind, this may change in the future to add more features. Um, you also can edit this particular person's profile by hitting these three dots here and go to edit client. And then you can change this around however you need. Your documents tab, once again, if you hit these X's, it will remove the documents. You can also view them by right clicking and hit open image in a new tab. And when you do that, it's going to pop open with whatever the image is um, as well. And you can do the same thing with the ID. It pops open with the image as well. All right, so now that you are in ready to attack status, you're probably going to want to do some form of challenging, disputing, things like that. But you notice that you don't have any credits. OK, so in order to purchase credits in your CRO level system, you want to click the credits button. And then when you go here, you want to add credits. So the minimum credit amount that you can purchase is 20. You can purchase 20 and 50 cents, you can purchase 21, you can purchase 27, and a credit is no different than a dollar, okay? So currently, um, at the time of this recording, it may be cheaper in the future to send in an attack that is non-static, it is $17. And we're gonna get into what an attack is as well. So say you wanted to just get one attack, all right? It's gonna say the minimum amount is 20, no problem. So you say, you know what? I have one client in which I want to process. I'm going to go to 20 bucks here. Go to checkout. And when it pops up, it's going to say dispute Panda credit for $20, so on and so forth. The credit is valid for this dispute Panda platform. Um, you know, you're going to get 20 credits, which are $1 each. And you need 17 credits at the time of this recording to send off an attack. You can use your credit card or you can use your bank account, right? Um, if you want to use your credit card, you will go in here and fill out this information. Once you fill out this information, um, the next step is to just hit pay. Once you pay, you're going to know your credit is going to populate right here on the bottom left here. And you see now you have 20 credits and you can um, generate your attack. Now let's go over every tab for the client so you understand what each one means, starting with the profile tab. So this is your profile tab. If you're on your dashboard and you click the action button here to go inside of a client, you're going to land on the profile tab. In the profile tab, you're going to see um, when they were a member since, their phone number, their address, their location, their birthday, email, and zip code. You can see the latest activity, the credit scores. Um, this will be being updated later as well. 
You also can hit the three icons right here and you can edit the client, which means you can change all the personal information or you can delete the client if you no longer want them in your system as well. You can do that. Now let's review the documents tab. We did a bit of this when we created a client, but let's go through it in detail again. Identification is your proof of ID or your proof of address. It is recommended that you have a driver's license, state ID, military ID, or something like that. And for your proof of um, address, you use the social security number with a utility bill, maybe a cell phone. Everyone has a cell phone, so if they can give you a copy of the cell phone, you can splice these two together using your photo editing software. Your credit report, um, the credit reports currently allowed are smart credit and all smart credit white labels. So including my free score now, the ID defender, things like that. Um, you can also use identity IQ and every derivative of identity IQ, my score IQ and identity IQ are used as well. And in the future, there will be additional credit monitoring uh, provided as well. Credit monitoring credentials, self-explanatory. You'll put the name of the credit monitoring that you're using, the username and password, just in case you ever needed that in the future. Um, you also, once again, you can right click and open any of these images. Um, so you can view your images here and you can do the same thing with the credit report. If you left click on this credit report, it will pop open and you'll be able to do a side by side comparison of what's on this credit report versus what is on the disputing tab. And we're going to get into that next. Let's go into our overview of our disputing tab. So our disputing tab, you're going to see inquiries at the top, and then you'll see a breakdown of all the inquiries. If you want them shown, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you left click on any of these, it will just reduce it down to the view that you would like. Um, number one thing to do is before you move on to any a tab, you have to always hit save filter, save filter lets the attack engine know what to actually challenge or to dispute on your behalf. Public records section, this will include all your bankruptcies, even down to the, um, if you see also the breakdown of it all, and you can do the same thing. You can just demonstrate the bankruptcies or public records that are on each particular credit report. And then accounts are for everything else. This is where you're going to have your uh, late payments. You're going to have your um, collections, your charge off. And how this is lined up is exactly how it is lined up on the actual credit report. So if you were to go back to your uh, documents tab and left click on the credit report and do a side by side view, you will be able to see it all transitions like this. Another thing we would like to explain is the color coding. So when you see this red border, that is something that is going to be challenged within the attack engine. Um, you can also thumb through the different areas as well. So if you see, you can click on each one of them here. And let's start, let's get into some of these account things here. So right now you see this CB Victoria's Secret is the name of the account. This is the account number. The last reported on is the last date is reported on and the date of last activity is right here. So you're going to have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a nine status quick view. And this is organized a little bit differently than you will see on the credit report because we wanted to give you a snapshot of if you should challenge it or not. Now, if you wanted to see more details about this particular account, you can hit show more and it opens up and it shows all the remaining fields. So you're going to have all these fields you have fields here um, that you can easily see in a clear concise view as you notice the date of lax activity and the date reported they are at the bottom of that list because we have them in a, your quick snapshot view um, also with certain credit reports you will get the snapshot of the late payment history so we click on this one here we, you will see why this one was flagged as a negative and that's another thing to look at um, with smart credit reports and smart credit derivatives, the uh, payment history is also currently captured. So you might be saying, hey, this is current. Why did the engine pick this up? Oh, they have a 30 day late payment. And then you can decide if you want to continue to challenge this or not based off your own disputing techniques. If you wanted to unclick something, you simply would just uncheck box, take the box off. Or if you wanted to select something else, example, you just check the ones that you want to select. Um, 
you can reset the filter. So say you made a mistake and you accidentally deselected all accounts. Um, so right now, nothing in an account area is selected. You can just hit this reset button. And by you hitting the reset button, it gives all the original um, reasons for challenging back again. Um, since we are a hybrid compliance slash Metro 2 and factual disputing system, you can also go into factual disputing mode pretty easily by just hitting this add a custom message here. So let's just use this one. We notice that they have one 30 day late payment on Equifax. And we know that this was open in 2018. Um, so even though it's closed, maybe we don't want this completely removed for whatever reason. So you can go in to add your custom message and then you could also view, click on the, the profile that you want. If you want to kind of see everything here, you can type in your actual factual message if you want to, whether it's the USC codes, whether it's your own verbiage or anything like that. But what happens when you do that, you can save it as a template for future use. You know, so if you have a certain way of challenging your late payments, for example, or your collections, you can just come in here and drop that custom message in. Um, and then you just hit save here if you want it saved. And you once you see this here, edit the custom message. Once you left click this, it'll open up again to be able to edit that message or you can hit um, remove, right? So if you wanna take the message off, you just hit removed. If you want it back on, you can come in here and select your template if you want to, or you can type in your own custom message and you hit save there. Um, so right, right now, what's going to happen is once we get to our tax, this particular account is going to ignore the AI engine and use your factual dispute reason. But the other accounts are going to use the AI engine to do the work. So you do have the best of both worlds when it comes to disputing in that particular manner. Um, once again, you always have to hit save filter. And then once you hit save filter, it brings you to the attack round. But let's just do another quick recap on the disputing tab. Inquiries are at, at the top. One recommendation we would say is, is you notice the inquiries are not auto selected in this initially. Um, you have to manually select the inquiries. The reason being is um, we don't want the AI to challenge an account that is open. And the reason being, you see how Capital One is listed several different ways. You have Capital Space One, Capital Space N One, Space NA, Capital One altogether. Um, if you scroll down to this account and you view um, the Capital One account, well, it's Capital One Space and it's also current and open, right? So similar to kind of like the late payments, you have to make a judgment call if you want to challenge those particular inquiries. But if you want to challenge them, it's as simple as just selecting them all, hitting save filter and moving forward. Now let's go over our attacks tab. If you've never sent an attack before, it's going to, the screen is going to look like this. It's going to say the client name is ready to start credit repair. Get started by running our dispute engine. Um, in order to activate the dispute engine, you have to hit this drop down right here. And then you'll see the attack uh, types. And then once you click inside of an attack type, you'll see the attack versions. So let's get into the details of these, what each different attack type is. So a nerve attack attacks every single last item on the credit report that you selected in the filter, right? So if you selected five inquiries, and you had six bankruptcies and five accounts, everything associated with Experian is going to be on that letter. Everything associated with Equifax will be on that letter. Everything associated with TransUnion will be on that letter. A pinwheel attack is similar to the nerve attack. So you'll have everything on the letter um, on one page as well, but you're gonna have limitations. So if you have somebody with say uh, 37 inquiries, instead of putting them on one uh, one attack is going to separate them by tens, right? So you'll have one, let's say you had 37 inquiries on Experian. Then what's going to occur is you're going to have a 10 on one, 10 on another, 10 on a third, seven on the last one. You are not charged any differently for using these attacks, by the way. Let's just get that clear. Whether you use a nerve attack, a pinwheel, punch your fury, round click, or paralyzing touch point, the price is still at the moment 17. Static letters are 100% free, as long as you have credits in the system. Um, the Punch of Fury, this separates each 
let each attack by type. Um, so it creates a letter for each type. So you're going to have a personal information letter. You're going to have a letter for inquiries. You're going to have a letter for bankruptcies. And you're going to have a letter for everything else. So you're going to have at least four letters for TransUnion as long as you have the negatives there. Case in point, for somebody who does not have bankruptcies, you're just going to have possibly three letters for TransUnion. If you do not challenge inquiries, then you're just going to have a personal information letter and an accounts letter. So it's also smart logic as well. The pin will attack will downgrade to a nerve attack um, if you don't have enough negatives for it. So say you have somebody who only has nine inquiries and five negative accounts, then it will say pin will attack. But the smart logic is going to downgrade it and put everything on one um, piece of paper. And I'll show you some examples. Punch your fury. And we just covered that your round kick is similar to the punch your fury, but with the limitations. Right. So. If you have somebody once again with 37 inquiries or 36 inquiries, then you're going to have three letters just for inquiries because you're only going to cover nine each. If you have somebody with 10 collections, right, 10 collections on Experian, then you're going to have two Experian letters for the collections. If you have somebody with um, bankruptcies, you have your bankruptcy letter and so on and so forth. So just think your round kick is the same as the punch of fury except you're going to get more letters because it's breaking things up. Paralyzing touch point, you'll have a letter for every single last thing that you create. All right. Um, let's get into the versions, attack versions, since we know what the types are. The attack versions. Um, the regular one is just a regular plain Jane letter with um, red as the for the account name. Premium has a panda highlight. I'm going to show you some examples of premium as well. Supreme is uh, an addition to the premium. So you're going to have the Panda highlight and then you're going to have the Metro 2 logic on top of the table. You're going to have the Metro 2 logic um, calling below and Supreme boosted is a combination of all three of these where you're going to have the table. You're going to have the circle from the Supreme. You're going to have the Metro 2 logic on the table from the Supreme. And you're also going to have additional attack vectors below the account as well. So it's going to challenge between three to six of those things. Okay. So one thing I wanted to go back and explain is why only five attack types? Why only these five? Well, dispute Panda AI ensures that you're not using cookie cutter factual or cookie cutter software or cookie cutter Metro two templates. And it changes every word with every letter. This means you can use the same nerve attack over and over and over again and still be effective, whereas other systems and softwares use the same template. And this is why they have to create new letters every year because the old templates are no longer effective. Back in the day, everyone was sending the 609 letter. It stopped working, right? The same thing happens with Metro 2 challenges or any other factual challenge, just like you won't send the word verified or validate this, or this is not mine over and over again to expect results, you cannot expect to send the same Metro 2 verbiage over and over and over again as well. Um, so we only need five different attacks because the verbiage in Dispute Pandas AI changes every time. So the credit bureaus cannot say that you'll get way, you get less and less frivolous responses and you'll get more positive responses because we're not using cookie cutter templates. Also, after testing this for a year, running thousands of credit reports through the system, these five attack types reign supreme. So we are constantly testing different variations and looks of this, which will have no impact on you as a customer. But we noticed that seven negatives and 10 inquiries did better than um, 10 negatives and 12 inquiries. We tested these things. Um, so based off our data, these five give us, give us and the client the greatest chance of results. Um, now, why four different versions of attacks? Well, the different versions are, there's no Metro 2 logic on the regular nerve attack and there's no Metro 2 logic on the premium attack. Um, however, they do give a different look. So because our AI changes the words all the time, you have built in dispute flows by using a different version. The Supreme and Supreme Boosted will add the Metro 2 logic and the Metro 2, uh, the Metro 2 logic on top of the table. Even though we're still doing compliance challenges with all of these, we're giving the credit bureaus 
different looks and feels. So they're not seeing the same letter over and over again. So if the words change, then how the letter looks change as well, depending on which one of these you use. Let's also get into static letters. Now, what is the static letter? So static letters are template letters that you might find in your uh, regular software from credit repair. You're going to see your um, debt validation letter, right? So if a debt collector sends your client something in the mail, you want to make sure that they have the the capacity or the ability to collect on that debt, you send a debt validation letter. If you're trying to set the credit bureaus up to sue them and you don't want the collection agency to communicate with your client, you can send a cease and desist and refusal to pay. Um, if the credit bureaus did not respond to an attack in the last 30 days or so, um, you can send a failure to respond. The personal information letter is if you need to update the personal information for that particular person. Um, you can send a simple letter instead of sending um, a long drawn out thing. A reinsertion is if something was to pop back up on the credit report, you can resend a reinsertion letter if they didn't notify your client within five days. Your method of verification, if something comes back verified, in addition to your attack, you can send a method of verification letter to have the credit bureaus prove um, how they verified the data was accurate. And then you have a few uh, secondary credit bureaus that assist with removal of bankruptcies, child support, and things like that. LexisNexis, Innovis, LCI, and ARS. And of course, in the future, this static letter template will expand based off your recommendations also. But once again, static letters are 100% free and they never pull from your credit system um, at all. So just keep that in mind. As long as you have credits in the system, you can come in and send any of these static letters so you're not getting um, charged additional money just to do some things to help out your client. Okay, so we're going to go into an overview of how to attack. So one, you're going to select everything that you want on your filters tab. You're going to add in your custom reasoning if you want to. Um, for this one, we did add in some reasoning for this one. Um, just to show you how it pops up. So you have everything selected. You hit save filter, start new round, and then you can select the attack that you want. Um, for this one, I'm just going to select our nerve attack uh, premium. Start round. Once you hit start round, you're going to see this pop up and then your attack or your static should pop up right here as well. You can click on it and then periodically every five seconds to 10 seconds, just hit this reload button. You might see documents created for sample client or it might just open up if you hit reload again. Then you're going to see that we started at 14, we ended at 26. So we're about 20 seconds there. Then you can download them all or you can mail them out. Um, you can show them all as well. And we'll be getting into a detailed breakdown of what each attack type looks like. Get into how to mail letters. So I'm going to go to an attack that wasn't mailed out yet. Pretty simple. Once you have your attack, you hit mail them out. Once you hit mail them out, it's going to pop up with a screen like this. Make the recipient the sender means that if you're sending to TransUnion, instead of it coming from your client, TransUnion will be sending to TransUnion. Experian will be sending to Experian. We experience better results by doing that if you're sending certified mail, but test it out if you like. Um, you can select which letters you want to send things to if you this is the select and deselect one. So say, for example, you wanted to download and send TransUnion one. You can do that and you can mail out TransUnion two and three and say you wanted to download the other ones. You can do that as well. Um, you can bulk change from certified mail to first class and vice versa. Say you wanted to mail some certified and some first class. So say case in point, you wanted to do first class for everything except for the first letters. You can do that. And the price adjusts accordingly. Um, the first page is always about a dollar and one cents. Um, and then each additional page is around 10 cents or so, depending on um, if you're sending color or not. You can send double sided or single sided. We will say that anything under seven pages, you should send, you should send single sided. Um, anything over uh, seven pages and above, send double sided so you're not paying additional postage. And you can send color or not color. Um, and you just hit pay and mail if you would like. So let's turn color off. Let's turn these things to turn off certified. 
Let's make them all first class really quickly. And da -da -da. so we're good to go here. Um, so you just hit pay and mail. You're gonna get a pop-up that says documents mailed. And then you're gonna see that the, the mailing out is actually occurring in about a week or so. You're gonna see inside of the letters tab, the history tab for this client, you're gonna see the details of all the mailing breakdown as well as the letters tab, you will see the details for all the mailing. And you're gonna get a few statuses when it comes to that. Um, a few of the statuses that you're gonna get when it comes to mailing. You're gonna get a mailed status, which means you, know, you actually mailed it. In transit, it means it's in process to be transit. In the local area, which means it's in the local area to be delivered. Process for delivery, it's process for delivery and delivered. So you're going to have five statuses when it comes to the mail um, as well that you'll be able to easily see when things were delivered and things like that. And of course, the certified tracking will be built in also. So static letters are templated letters without the Panda AI. You can send things to the secondary credit bureaus. You can send method of verification, reinsertion, personal information, failure to respond, debt validation, and cease and desist. So let's start with the ones on the bottom here. Um, you will use these in instances of public records, child support, things like that. Step one, you go to your disputing tab and you're gonna select the items in which you want to challenge with those things. Um, let's select our bankruptcies here. And let's deselect everything else. Um, once again, if you wanted to get everything back, you can just hit reset to bring the accounts back um, as well. And then deselect if you want to take them off. But you always have to save filter. You save your filter. Start new round. Static letters. Let's select all of them. Start round. So you see now your static letter is being generated. Let's hit this refresh here, periodically every five seconds. All right, so we go show all, you see all the LexisNexis, Innovis, LCI, ARS. You can download them, you can mail them out. Let's see what they look like. So when you pop it open, to whom may concern, it's going to LexisNexis has the bankruptcy information, it has the the language that you want to have there, and it's telling the police in a written response to the address of the client. Um, and it's the same thing with your invoice letter. But once again, you're not having to send a 14 page or 15 page letter to get the job done. Quick two pages, knock it out. Let's now move on to assuming the client's personal information is incorrect. And every dispute round or every attack within the system does include personal information, but you may want to send this also before your attack just to clear it up. You can click on your personal information around there. You say start round. As you see, I'm always hitting this reload button. So this took about six seconds and it's gonna see it send the personal information letter to each of the credit bureaus. And it looks something like this. Hey, my only name is this. My only address is that. And it's the same for Experian and Equifax. Um, and now say we had a scenario in which you send out a challenge. And let's just assume the bureaus didn't respond for whatever reason. Make sure I have an inquiry selected for all these as well. Um, you go to your static letters. And Let's say it's been 30 days or 35 days and a bureau didn't respond. You can send a failure to respond as well. And a failure to respond will allow you to, um, you know, this is why we say we have a factual and, and compliance-based system because we're combining these things, right? If the credit bureau doesn't respond in a certain time frame, there's a chance you can get deletions as well. Um, so once again, let's see what this looks like. And once again, this failure to respond, method of verification, those all those things adhere to what is specified in the filter. So we had uh, the bankruptcies on there for that one. Cool. Um, and you can do the same thing with your method of verification. Um, so if we go to our disputing tab here, uh, you see that 
we didn't have anything selected except for the bankruptcies on this one. So for the next one, I'm just going to hit this reset button to get more accounts in. I'm going to save my filter. And let's just say the last round we just did a uh, we did a failure to respond. Say, for example, you know, you've been sending out your attacks and you, you might have challenged factually. You might can challenge via compliance based. Um, we still recommend that you follow the dispute flows, but you should have responses to the credit bureau's responses as well. So if um, case in point, something the credit bureau said the item was verified, well, you can come in and, and select in your filter the items that they said were verified. We're assuming they said these four inquiries were verified, the bankruptcy were verified, and let's just say they say these three accounts were verified as well. You save your filter, start new round, static letters, method of verification. And keep in mind, these static rounds are 100% free as long as you have credits within the system. So once again, we periodically hit this reload button. This took about two seconds. Method of verification, let's come in here. So you have your text there, and then you have your accounts that we were specifying, which we wanted to challenge the bankruptcy and the inquiries. And this will be specific to the particular credit bureau. We're not sending any unnecessary things to Experian that TransUnion has. As you see, it's all Experian data here, um, even the bankruptcies, even the inquiry. Um, let's continue further. Say, um, you had some items deleted and you wanted to challenge them because they were reinserted and they didn't notify you. All right. So say you, once again, let's just say we had these three, these four inquiries and, um, we had our bankruptcy. We had our first set of bankruptcies verified, but the second ones were removed. And, um, we had the Celtic account that was, uh, verified, uh, reinserted. Sorry. We save our filter for the items that were reinserted. Um, once again, you're still going to continue the attack flow that I'm going to be showing you a little bit later. But if you get something in it, if you get something that was removed and reinserted without proper notification, you should send this as well. So we start our round here. And once again, I'm going to hit this reload button. There we go. So that was, uh, less than 10 seconds. Let's go to our transunion here. As we see the bankruptcy, the inquiry in that particular account, very short and clean, punchy. Hey, the items below have re reinserted into my credit file. Um, here's the one for Experian. Once again, only Experian data going to Experian, only transunion data going to transunion. Um, <clears throat> So we covered failure to respond, personal information, reinsertion, and method of verification. Let's get into our assist, cease and desist and refusal to pay. So your cease and your desist and refusal to pay and your debt validation letters are things that are going to be sending to debt collectors, right? So if you have a debt collection on your credit report or your client receives something in the mail saying this is an attempt to collect a debt, you have a decision to make. You will send the debt validation letter if you want to challenge the debt collector on if they have the right to collect or if they have enough proof of it. A cease and desist refusal to pay is basically saying, hey, stop contacting me and I do not have any intentions of paying you. Um, a lot of the pre-litigation people like to use the cease and desist refusal to pay because if you're suing the credit bureaus or the debt collectors, you need to line things up properly. That's what our system allows you to do as well. Um, so you can have your time in court and still win. So let's say we need to fill this out. It's going to ask you who's receiving this document. So let's say it's Midland Credit, the address. So you have to type in the address here. Typically, you will receive, so your client would have received something in the mail. You want to make sure there's a five digit zip code there. So you're typing in who's receiving it, the address is going to, the city, the state, the zip code, and the account reference number. Typically, you will find this on the actual document. Start to round. And of course, you do your refresh thing as well. So that's about five seconds. And then you have your cease and desist, which you can download or mail out. 
simple document, very clean, um, doesn't need to be punchy. You basically just tell them, hey, per uh, 15 USC section 1692, a refusal to pay and cease and cease all further communication. Um, and of course, you can mail it out as well. As you see, it's going to be about a buck to mail that out. And the debt validation works uh, the same as well. It's asking you for who's receiving it, what city, what state, what zip code, count reference number, the date you received the letter from the third party, and the amount owed specified in the document. So if your client did receive something, you can come in here and say, hey, you sent me this on um, September 1st of blah, 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 blah. Um, and the amount you said was X, Y, Z. So you just fill in these things and it, it works out exactly the same. And then you can mail that out also. So that is your detailed breakdown of your static letters. And of course, um, we'll be adding more and more static letters into the library as you guys need. Um, but once again, um, at the moment, there is no cost for static letters as long as you have credits in the system. Um, we just want to allow you to get the best results possible. Um, here I'm going to show you the difference between the nerve attack pinwheel attack, punch of fury, um, and paralyzing touch point. So one, we're going to make sure we have all the negatives selected. Save our filter. You can select more increase if you want, as long as they're not tied to open accounts. That is what we would say is the best practices. Once again, but when you come to um, this disputing tab, just know that increase will not be selected automatically. So I'm just going to go and select two from each tab here. I'm going to, I have my bankruptcy selected and all my other negative items. I'm going to hit save filter. So we're going to start around and we're going to do nerve attack. I'm just going to show you um, the differences in how the nerve attack operates from the other one. So the nerve attack, you're going to have all items on one credit report. I'm just going to use the regular one for now. In another video, I'm going to break down the differences between the premium, supreme, and supreme boosted and show you examples. All right, so our nerve attack is created. We're gonna use the same filter, and then we're gonna create our pinwheel attack. Now the pinwheel attack is the same as, the same style as a nerve attack, right? The goal is to have all items on, for TransUnion on one report, all items for Experian on one report, all items for Equifax on one report, but it limits it by seven negatives and 10 increase, right? So if you have, 21 negatives, you're going to have on Experian, you're going to have three different pages for Experian at a minimum. Once again, periodically hit the refresh. Um, now we're going to go to our punch of fury. We're going to create a letter for each type. You're going to have a personal information letter, an inquiry letter, a public record letter, and then an accounts letter or everything else. So you're going to have at least four for Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you don't have any bankruptcies, it will not create a bankruptcy letter. If you don't have any inquiry selected, it won't select an inquiry letter either. So it's smart enough to um, not produce empty paper. So we'll do the same thing here. As you see, I'm hitting that reload button there. So this took about 10 seconds here. As you see, this is 12 attachments, right? Because it's breaking everything up. And then our round kick is similar to the Punch of Fury, except you're going to have limitations, right? So if Equifax had 10 accounts, you're going to have at least two Equifax account letters. So as you see, the round kit created even way more letters than the Punch of Fury, right? Because the Punch of Fury is limiting by a number of counts, whereas the round kick is only giving you a certain number on there. So the next one is your paralyzing touch point, which creates a letter for each item. So I'm just going to um, do that one as well to kind of show you the breakdown on the pages for that.
And periodically you do want to hit this refresh. And keep in mind the paralyzing touch point um, is the most resource intensive. So it might take a full two minutes for this one since it's creating a letter for each negative item. All right. So as you see, the paralyzing touch point from 46 to 48. So it did take the full two minutes. Um, so just be patient with it. It did create 48 different letters since there were 48 negative items um, to be addressed. So let's go back, starting at the nerve attack really quickly, which I believe was our attack one. All right. So we're on our attack one. This was our nerve attack. As you see, it was only three items here. Is one for TransUnion, one for Experian, one for Equifax. If you were to mail that out, it's pretty inexpensive. It includes seven pages, right? So even though we have a lot of negative seven pages there, um, and that's be four bucks to pretty much handle a seven page uh, Metro 2 letter. Um, our attack two was our pinwheel attack, right? So I'm going to get this a second to load. Our pinwheel strategy was just like the nerve attack. Right. Our pinwheel strategy was just like a nerve attack, except we're going to limit the negatives to seven per bureau before we create another letter. So you're going to see that you now have seven pages. And if you were to mail them out, the page count went down because it broke up. So instead of having just one transunion, you have three of them because of how many accounts that this person had. And it's very important that you separate from sending everything on one letter and, and break up your dispute flow in that manner so you can get the best results possible. Now, if we go to our third attack, Punch of Fury, it essentially took those items and broke it up into four different letters at a minimum. So if we go to our third attack, you'll be able to see. Now we have 12 attachments. Now, why do we have 12? Because we have an inquiry letter. We have a personal information letter. We have a bankruptcy letter. We have an accounts letter, right? So at a minimum, we're going to have four for TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. If we did not have bankruptcy selected, we will only have three letters. If we didn't have inquiry selected, we would have two letters per bureau, right? So if you were to go to mail that out, as you see, some of these pages are um, only two pages. Some of them are longer, right? Your personal information is just one page plus your identification documentation. The inquiries are on one page. Um, the bankruptcies are on one page. So these sixes, these are accounts, right? So TransUnion 2 will be the accounts one, right? So if I was to open that up, you'll see that these are our accounts. And once again, we're going to get into the differences between the regular, um, the regular versus premium supreme um, as well. All right. So now we're going to move to our round kick, which is just like a punch of fury, except we're going to add our limitations on it. So if the punch of fury was 12, then a round kick will be more. So if you notice how this is sequenced is also from um, least mo most efficient to most to least efficient. Right. If you're talking about paper and mailing costs and things like that. However, you need to mix all of these in there to get the best results for your client. So if we move to our round kick. You will see if we had 12 for the punch of fury, the round kick is going to be even more letters because we have to have more accounts, um, more letters for the accounts that we're separating. So as you see now, instead of having 12, we created 16, but you know, you then notice that the page count goes down, right? So now we're sending twos and three page letters and things like that as well, because we broke up all the accounts that this person has. Um, so once again, you're still going to have your accounts letter, but this uh, capital one, um, this particular transunion letter is only going to show one, two, three, four, five, five negatives before it generates another one. Right. So um, as you see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six transunion letters now because there are more accounts that were created. Now, if we go to our uh, uh, other letter, our paralyzing touch point, we are creating a letter for each item selected. In our dispute flows, you would notice that there is a time and a place to use the paralyzing touch point. Right. You don't you wouldn't start off with this one, um, but there is a, a time that you will use it as well. So you see we have 48 different letters. Now, why do we have 48 different letters? Because we have 48 items, negative items that were being challenged by this particular person. Um, so if we just grab one at random, you will see this is for the finger hut account, right? So for this finger hut account, we're challenging this only that account directly. If we choose just another one at random here, um, 
Oh, that was the TransUnion Experian Finger Hut. This is the Experian one. Let me see if I can get another Experian one. This is the Experian Capital One, right? So as you see, everything is broken up individualized. And you will notice that most likely everything is going to be one or two pages long, right? Um, so there's the breakdown between the types of attacks. What I mean by that is, I'm sorry, attack version detail breakdown. So we went over with nerve attack, pinwheel, punch of fury, round kick, paralyzing touch point, as well as a few static letters. But now we're going to get into the difference between regular, premium, supreme, and supreme boosted. Um, the versions do not change depending on the type. So, you know, the regular attack is going to be the same style looking regular attack for a nerve attack than it will be for a pinwheel, punch of fury, and etc. Premium is similar to the nerve attack, but adds our Panda AI highlight on top of the dispute table. Nerve attack supreme is similar to the nerve attack premium, but adds the Panda AI triple plus attack logic and Metro two logic to the challenge to the actual table. And the nerve attack supreme boosted is an addition to the supreme. So you have everything included in the supreme, but additional AI driven attack logic. And of course, the Metro two coding on top of the table. Every single last attack, unless you're including factual disputing in there, will include the Panda AI um, compliance based logic. So let's get into how they look. So here is a, a regular letter, right? So you'll have all the verbiage in here changes, right? So the intro paragraph will be different for every single last time you run this. The same thing with the personal information section and, and how we're challenging that. So all the words always change. Now, what is different about this version will be how it is displayed, right? As you see, TransUnion, this is a TransUnion letter. So we're only sending TransUnion data to TransUnion. We do not waste paper by sending Equifax data to TransUnion or Experian data to TransUnion because it doesn't help. So you'll see your your uh, account name, account number, last verified, all data fields, right? So it should be around between either 19 or 22 data fields here. Um, and then you'll see the compliance based verbiage there. And then once again, under every single last um, account, everything that's being challenged, the words always change. This is what the regular letter looks like. If you look at a premium letter, this is also to TransUnion. As you will see, the intro is different. The how we attack personal information is different as well. And then you will see the panda highlight. Right. So you still going to you're going to get everything that you get in a normal letter. But then you have your panda highlight on there and it varies depending on um, once the system analyzes the record, it decides what should be highlighted to bring more attention to it. Um, and of course, you do have your compliance based challenge down here. And if you go into factual disputing mode, you can negate this completely and have your factual reason in there. Also, um, sending regular regular letters or premium letters and factually disputing is greater in this system than other systems because of all the data fields that we're showing here and how the letter looks. Let's now move over to our Supreme letter. Now, Supreme letter is going to include the intro section and then the summary of everything that's being challenged. So if you notice that on the premium letter in the regular letter, it didn't have the summary. That's only for the Supreme and Supreme boosted. Here, you're gonna see the premium highlight. You're gonna see the Supreme um, uh, circle as well. And then you're going to see the Metro two field coding on top, right? So, um, HR 12 is the name, uh, I'm sorry, is the account name BS seven is account number BS dash 23 base sector field, 23 base sector field seven. That's what that means. Um, header record field eight is data last activity. All these things line up with the Metro two coding. And then you'll you have your compliance based challenge here, which will always vary. And then you'll have some additional verbiage. Also see the image above calling out this specifically. So the Supreme letter works just like that. And of course, all the verbiage is different under every single last one. If we go to our Supreme boosted letter, you're going to have your intro section, the summary of what's being challenged. You have your account name, of course, and then you got your account number and all that. You got your Panda highlight. You got your Supreme circle. You have your compliance based challenge. But then you're going to see the additional things that the Supreme boosted does. So it's going to challenge between three to seven items within here based off of now the Panda 
Panda does its analysis and it determines that, okay, we should turn on this date open, account type, last verified, uh, creditor type, so on and so forth. Panda highlight from premium is there. The circle for Supreme is there. Your um, compliant ba compliance based challenge is there as well. And then you see it's challenging additional things. So it's challenging four as well. So the the system analyzes what's going on and it decides what's the best verbiage as well as the best highlight, the best red circle, the best uh, things to put in there, as well as Supreme Boosted will take between three to seven um, fields in here to decide um, what else should be challenged. Now, um, another one will be, I just wanted to show this one here. If we go here, I want to my disputing tab and I added a um, custom reason. So I wanted to factually dispute this particular account. Um, so if we go to see this here, I, I used a premium letter. This is the credit one bank here. And what we're doing is this is a sample factual dispute verbiage with disputepanda.com. So as you see, we replaced the compliance based challenge and we added in our factual based reasoning. Um, and of course, every single last page is, is numbered. Um, the reason why we number the pages is if it's being scanned by the credit bureaus, you don't want it to be scanned out of order. Um, this way you get better and better results um, as well. So that is the breakdown of your different versions. Let's get into the best or the recommended attack flows. So there are four. These four have been um, tested thoroughly through and through. Um, and the most effective is the red flow. The most efficient but least effective is the blue and the black and the white flow are neutral or preferences. Now, um, in all of our testing, we did notice that sending that first round certified um, tend to yield better results than not sending that first round certified. We also noticed that sending the first round in color and single sided did better as well. So let's explain uh, this legend really quickly, just using the red flow. So attack number, this is your disputing round. So if, for example, attack number one is your round one, attack number six is round six. So you see we have it lined up one through 12, gives you a full 12 rounds of challenging. Attack name, that's the name of the attack that you will send. All right, so you know you already know pinwheel, round kick, nerve, um, nerve. You already know those things. <clears throat> variation is the attack variation you will send. You're going to be sending either between regular, premium, supreme, and supreme boosted. Your mail type. This is the mail type you should send. The recommend mail type. Uh, there are only two types of mail. First class or certified. Right, so you're going to be sending first class or certified mail. RTS means um, you should make the recipient the sender. And that's associated with mailing, as you remember from the mailing tutorial. So basically, if you're sending something to Equifax, you're going to make it seem like Equifax is sending to Equifax. You won't have the client's name there. Letter color is either a yes or no. Either you're sending a colored letter or you're sending black and white. Letter sides, S means single sided and D means double sided. And attack frequency. Um, this is the days between attacks. So attack one is on day one. Attack two should be on day 36. Attack three should be on 71. Um, so we tested various frequencies from 10 days, 14 days, 20 days, 25 days, and a 35 day attack sequence um, seems to be the best as well. Notice that the most effective is also go probably going to be more expensive in mail calls, right? If you're sending pinwheels and round kicks and paralyzing touch points, you are sending um, more letters by nature because the pinwheel doesn't just include everything on one letter. It might include, uh, it's only going to include seven negatives and 10 inquiries, right? If you look at that compared to the blue, which is most efficient, nerve attack is going to include everything on one letter, right? So pinwheel is, is third here, but as you see, we're going round kicks with the most effective. So it's going to cost you a little bit more in postage, but you should get way better results by using this red flow. Not saying that the blue flow, the white flow and the black flow are bad. But if you're talking about the best, then it's definitely the red flow. Um, black and white are neutral. So you're going to have a mix of effective and efficient, 
right? So we're sending pinwheels, puncher furies, round kicks, and nerves. And it's the same thing kind of with this one here, right? It's just your variation is slightly different. Now, what we will say is if you pick a flow, stick with it, right? At least stick with the flow through and through. You don't have to mix and match. You can create your own flow. But if you want to go with our recommended flow based off of our analysis, then we will suggest that you go with these. Let's look at some of our attack flow notes as well. So you're going to have uh, some exceptions. So number one is if the client's personal information is incorrect on the credit report, even though all letters come with a personal information section, we do recommend that you send one of the static rounds five days before your next attack. Cleaning up that personal information is vital. If your client has a BK or child support or anything like that, you should send the static uh, to the secondary bureaus of LCI, Innovis, LexisNexis, ARS. And um, if we have more in the future, we're going to add them too. With only um, the BK and the child support selected in the filter, and make sure you send that first class black and white double sided. If 35 days have passed since their last attack and your client didn't receive a response from the credit bureaus, you want to send a static failed to respond letter to the credit bureaus five days before initiating your next attack round. So um, even though we have this frequency of one in 36, if they didn't respond to the first one, you want to send that um, failure to respond and then send your second round, um, whether you're doing a black flow, red flow, white flow or blue flow. Um, for items from the credit bureau's claim that's verified, you want to send a static method of verification letter in response and continue your attack sequence five days later. So you send that letter first class black and white double sided, right? You don't have to send your method of verifications or anything like that in color. You want to save that. Um, now, to prevent de debt collectors from harassing your client and set the debt collector up for a lawsuit and to aid in the removal of debt collections, you can send a static send a cease and desist uh, and refusal to pay or a debt validation letter to all the debt collectors. You want to send this certified mail, black and white, double sided. And we recommend that you proactively send one of these letters to all debt collectors listed on the credit report. Now, debt validation is asking for more details about the debt while communicating um, only via the mail and cease and desist and refusal to pay is best for stopping all forms of communication and setting the debt collector up for a possible lawsuit for FDCPA violations. Keep in mind, if you send the cease and desist and refusal to pay, um, you are basically telling them, hey, stop communicating with me. I'm not paying you. Um, number six, do not challenge any inquiries associated with an open account on a credit report. You risk the credit prematurely closing that account. This is also another reason why we do not select the increase for you. You have to select the increase in which you want to challenge inside of your filter and make sure you hit save filter. And of course, number seven, if when mailing, if the page count is under seven, always send single sided. <clears throat> so here are the flows again. Once again, red is the most effective, but based off of your view of everything, it is going to cost you a little bit more in postage, um, ink and toner as well. Blue is the most efficient. Um, and black and white are neutral flows. So if I had to order these from most effective to least effective, it will be ordered in this manner. So if we go red, black, white, blue, not saying that blue is bad, it just doesn't get as effective results as red. Can, are you gonna get results with blue? Absolutely, especially if you follow this to a T and you follow the attack flow notes, you will get results. But in our experience, red has a higher percentage of getting results than blue. So in this video, we're going to cover the histories tab. So if you just go to the client that you were attacking or challenging with and you click on history, you'll be able to see the credit report uploads as well as the dates and the type of attacks that were sent as well right here on the right hand side of the house. You also can click any of these and see the letter that was sent out as well if you would like to review it. In the future, this tab will change a bit and it also will include the history of the mailing for this person also. Um, but at the moment, you'll be able to see every attack that you generated. You also can go to the attacks and you can thumb through it as well if you would like. And you can see the attacks on the history tab. This video, we're going to cover the settings tab. To get to the settings, go to your lower left here by your name and your email. 
you should see three dots. Once you hit the three dots, little thing will open up here. It'll allow you to sign out. You also can hit settings here. You can change your first name, last name, email address, reset your password as well, and just hit update and save. To close the settings tab, you simply hit the three dots again, and it will close. So in this video, we're going to cover this letters tab here. And when you go to the letters tab, you're going to have four columns, client name, letters, date and time it was sent. This will be in military time. Um, the action lets you uh, peek into the client. So if you click the eye here, it goes directly into the client's uh, profile tab. Um, the other clickable thing here is the actual name of the client. When you click on the name, it pops open with the letters that you sent. Um, so we'll show you the name, the type of letter here, where it was going, the destination, of course, the date this was initiated, the current status. It's going to be from downloaded to received to in transit to mail to delivered. The estimated delivery date, the class, first class to certified, color, yes or no, cited, uh, single sided, double sided, and of course, if you sent certified, your certified tracking number. Um, as you see here, it would also give you the name of the attack also. So if you send something with three letters, which is a nerve attack, or if you might send a pinwheel to have more letters, it will just keep going down with more of uh, the delivery there as well. And of course, you can always go and see the attack by clicking the eye here. You can go to the history tab or you go to the attacks tab and you can download it, print them out again if you would like. Um, so that is your overview of the letters tab. Just remember that this is the date and time is military time. You can click the eye on their action to see inside the profile and do additional things with this client. You will click the client name to get your their letter history for that round that you might have sent out.